movement. Mama. Using nice and quiet there, buddy. She's baby. 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 Everyone say bedtime. bedtime! Hi crafty people! Today I'm sharing with you the top 10 things that I think are the best things to sew for a baby. These are all things that I've either sewn myself and really enjoyed or things that I've bought that I've then received and thought I should have just sewed this instead. So I'm here today to share with you these top 10 ideas of things you can sew for either your baby or for a gift for another baby. If you missed my video last week, I shared the top 10 things that I think were the worst ideas of what to sew for a baby. So if you'd be interested to watch that, you can watch that video next. I'll link that in the description box down below. Of course, this is all my opinion and you are entitled to yours as well. I'd love to hear your opinion down in the comments below. Let me know what are some of your favourite things to sew for a baby. If you've never been to this channel before, then hello, my name is Marie. And this channel is all about motivating mums to make and mend. I am currently 24 weeks pregnant due in February with our fourth baby. Being our fourth baby, I have a fairly good idea of the things that I like to sew for a baby and I hope that these are inspiring for you too. So let's get started with my top 10 best ideas of what you can sew for a baby. Best baby projects. Item number one is the thing that I am most proud that I have made and that is a ring sling. A ring sling is a form of baby carrier so that you can wear your baby and have them nice and close and snuggled up to you so that you're able to then move around with hands free while still giving them a cuddle. It only cost me $25 to make this ring sling which is significantly cheaper than if you were to buy a ring sling. It cost me $5 for these rings that are specifically designed to be used as a ring sling. And I also bought this fabric for $20 from our baby wearing group here in Adelaide. If you are going to make a ring sling, then please do investigate baby wearing. It can be a safety risk, so I do recommend you become part of a baby wearing group and become knowledgeable about the safe way to use the ring sling and also how to make it so that it's safe as well. But this has been an item that I have used a lot. I made it when Isabel was a couple couple of weeks old because she was wanting to be held a lot and with an older toddler I needed to have a way to hold her with my hands free. I used it with Alice as well. I don't know I'll use it for this next baby. This is essentially what it looks like. A big concertina piece of fabric attached safely to these two rings here and when it's folded onto you correctly you are able to hold your baby in a safe way using a ring sling. If your baby is not being carried to you in the ring sling, they might be in their car seat. And that leads me on to item number two, which is a car seat cover. A car seat cover is a way to cover up their little capsule seat that they're sitting in when you're carrying it around places so that they're able to either keep sleeping or you're able to get them to sleep if the room is bright or noisy. I actually bought this car seat cover and it's been pretty bad quality to be honest. I've had to repair the stitching a couple of times and there are holes in the fabric as well. I'm going to make another car seat cover for this baby so if you'd like to see a tutorial of how I do that then let me know in the comments and I can share that video with you if you'd be interested. But I really think a car seat cover is a great way to keep your baby sleeping or to get them to sleep if you're out and about and I really think they're a handy thing to just have in the nappy bag at all times. Item number three are taggy toys. These are my favorite toys for little babies. They are so easy to also have in your nappy bag at all times and to have out on the go. They make a really great noise and you can make them so that they're high contrast and engaging with the sensory stimulation of the different tags and the different textures. I've made a tutorial before of how I make these taggy toys and I'll leave that linked in the description box below. These are the best toy in my opinion for a baby. They're machine washable, you can chuck them in a nappy bag, you can chuck them in their car seat, have them around at home and they're just a really good versatile toy for a little baby. So I really recommend that you make some taggy toys. Item number four is actually not a sewing project, it's a crochet project, and that is little newborn baby beanies. We didn't know if Alice was going to be a boy or a girl, it was a surprise, so I made two different hats so that we had them with us in the hospital and I was so glad that I did. It looked so cute in her little newborn photos that she was wearing something that I had made. And she's got the hat that we made such a sentimental thing 
and for all of my kids we have kept the hat that they wore in the hospital as a newborn and it's just such a beautiful sentimental piece to look back on and remember how small their little heads were we've kept it in a little treasure box for each of our kids so I really recommend you make a beanie for a new baby it could be crocheted like this or knitted or if you just want to sew you can sew a beanie out of a knit fabric but any of those options I think would be great because it is so sentimental to see how tiny their little newborn heads were which leads me on to item number five and that is sentimental clothing items although I said in my worst things to make video that baby clothes were a bit of a, a waste of time I do think that the exception to that is sentimental pieces whether that be a first Christmas outfit or a first birthday outfit like this one here that I made for Alice's first birthday I think sentimental items it's worth your time because you're going to take beautiful photos in it and you want them to be in something that looks lovely and is something memorable and something that you made is always nice as well this here is the dress and little nappy cover that I made for Alice's first birthday back in July and I shared the video about how I made the lettuce hem on the sleeves and the bottom of the skirt. So if you'd be interested to learn how to make a lettuce hem on a knit fabric, I'll link that video down below as well. So although in general I wouldn't bother making baby clothes, I do think making a sentimental item that you're going to either keep or have photos of, that, that is worth your time in making. Item number six is another clothing related item and that is baby bibs. I think that making dribble bibs is a great idea. I think that you can make them out of scrap fabric and that's very economical. You can make them really customized and cute if that's what you're into. You can make them match their clothes that they already have. There's just a lot of versatile things you can do with a bib and also you can kind of never have too many bibs. Once your baby is teething, I feel like they need a lot of bibs throughout the day and you're constantly needing to change them up. So having a lot of bibs on hand is a great idea. I think they're a great thing to make for your own baby or as gifts as well. And I've done a tutorial before about how I made these dribble bibs. I'll also leave that link down below if you're interested to see how I made these baby dribble bibs. Item number seven is wet bags. I think a wet bag is a necessity when you have a baby. I use cloth nappies and when I'm out on the go, if I have to change a nappy, I can put it in this wet bag and it will keep my nappy bag clean and dry. They're also great for changes of clothes. And even now, Elijah's starting kindy soon. He needs to bring a change of clothes to kindy. And putting it in a wet bag is a great way to make sure that when dirty clothes come back home again, they're coming back in something that's not going to get the rest of his bag all messy. We have wet bags in a lot of different sizes and most of these we've gotten for free when we've bought cloth nappies. We've got these size wet bags which are great for changes of clothes or for multiple nappy changes when you're out and about. We've also got these smaller ones which are good for just if you're changing one nappy and you just need to put that one nappy in a wet bag. We also have this very large wet bag which we put inside a foot pedal bin which is where we put all of the dirty nappies before they're ready to be washed and then when they are ready to be washed we take this liner out and put that in the wash with all the nappies that it's filled with ready to be used again. Even if you don't use cloth nappies, I still think a wet bag is a really good thing to make so that you can put dirty clothes in it even, or if you go swimming for swimming lessons, you can put their wet swimming clothes in that as well. I'm actually going to be making another wet bag for our family soon in a different dimension for a different purpose. So uh, you have to watch out <laughs> in future videos. It's a bit of an odd use of a wet bag, but a good one too so if you if you're curious about that just subscribe item number eight it's a bit of a big one it's a changing pad cover now these are just essentially an elasticated like fitted sheet sort of thing that goes over your changing pad and they're great it's a good item to have so that you can keep your changing pad clean but I really recommend just making them rather than buying them they're pretty expensive to buy this is the original one that we bought when we bought the changing pad and what I recommend is if you are going to buy one then you can use that as the pattern to then make any extras that you need or don't buy any and just make a pattern from the pad itself. So yes I think that a changing pad cover is necessary and I think they're a great thing to sew rather than buy just more cost efficient and also then you can match it to your room decor. Related to that one, number nine is fitted sheets for your cot. These are very easy to make and you can then make them again so that they match the theme in your nursery. I'm happy to share a tutorial about how to make fitted cot sheets. If that would be interesting to you, just let me know in the comments so I know that that's a video you'd like to see. But they are very easy to make and they're a great way to add a pop of color and it's something that you're going to need quite a few of if your baby has a few accidents and you need to be changing out the sheets quite regularly. Item number 10 is just in general 
the nursery decor. I think that making the decor in your nursery is a lovely way to bring your own personality into it and to incorporate a theme that you think looks nice. For us, when we had Elijah, we went for a gender neutral yellow and white themed nursery and then we have used that nursery for each of our kids just kind of cycling them through the nursery and kicking them out when the next one's due. We really love the way we've designed our nursery and how it's kind of evolved over the past four and a half years of it being used. One thing that I specifically sewed back in the nursery when I was pregnant with Elijah were covers for the IKEA Droner boxes. A lot of people get the big Kallax unit from IKEA. It's a very popular item and I wanted to personalize it by making covers around the Droner boxes so that it added a bit of color and interest in the room. These are a big statement piece in our room. I'm really glad I took the time to make these covers and I'll be happy to share again a tutorial for that with you if you would like to. I have made the same type of covers for my Droner boxes just here, some in the playroom, some in the kids' bedroom, and of course these ones in the nursery. They're a great way to add color to a space because they do take up a lot of space and they're actually quite an easy thing to make they're just essentially a big rectangular tube with a handle on it so I really recommend making them or you could make some bunting that always looks nice too in a room I've done a tutorial about bunting as well which I'll link in the description box down below too so there you have it you've heard my top 10 best things that you could make for a baby I hope that you feel inspired to go out and make some of these things for your baby or a baby in your life and I would love to see pictures of what you do make. Feel free to tag me on Instagram in any of your pictures so I can see some of your creations. I've made a lot of tutorials before about some of the things I've shared with you so they'll all be linked in the description box if you want to check one of them out. But if you have other ideas of what you would like for me to make, I'd love to see a comment about that too so that I know what content is best for you. I'd love to make a follow-up video to this about my top 10 things to make for a toddler. So if that's interesting to you, press the like button. If I get to 50 likes, then I'll make that video about my favorite things to make in the toddler age range. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can come back and watch some of my future videos, or you can watch some of my past videos by checking down in the description box to see another video you might be interested in watching next. So thanks again for watching, and until next time, go get creative, and I'll see you later.